Hello everyone, I am High Treason, and I'm sure some of you will remember, you know, I already did a video on a Pentium 60, so you're thinking, you cheap-ass motherfucker, you're making another video about the same damn thing. Why do another one? Well, that's actually not the case. This is a different system, mostly. It lives in the same case, or sort of, the other one wasn't in this case when we looked at it. But it was in here when we had it ringing at some later videos, like when we overclocked it and put it against the overdrive. As you may remember, I wasn't a big fan of the system, and I found certain things about it to be rather annoying. Hence, a new one exists, and the old one has been dismantled for the time being and will be stored safely. So, what about this new one? Oh, yeah, I wonder if you like my new graphics. They're a bit unnecessary and not quite tidied up yet. But I'm tired of my text looking crap. Too bad I've got to change my banner now as it's using the preliminary design that I nearly went with. Anyway, this new Pentium. Well, it uses some of the same hardware. But it also incorporates some different stuff too. The first thing I imagine that's going to stick out is that motherboard. I mean, this was the old one, so yeah, they're really not that much alike. In fact, pretty much nothing alike outside of the processor socket. And the processor is also different. This is an SX926 Pentium, and it runs at 60 MHz. Yes, it has the FDIV bug, and yes, I butchered my case. I'll do a tidier job of that later, but it's working for now, and I'm in the middle of moving house, so I don't have time. That piece of metal has been a problem since day one anyway. When I first got this case, the CPU was in that spot, on a 486 board, which no longer works, smells like burning. And on the old Pentium, it got in the way of the RAM. In fact, it's gotten in the way with every board this case has ever housed. And I'm never going to put anything in that base, so yeah, I bent it. If I really need it, I'll bend it back. Video is provided by my trusty S3 Trio 32, which is no longer a testbed card, as there's nothing left to test. And I think I said before that it is, strangely, a little faster than any of my Trio 64 boards. I don't really know why. Perhaps something to do with this memory interface jumper? I've no idea. Certainly an adequate card for DOS, though I have to give a thumbs up to Ammo Retro for including an ATI Max 64 with the board. That was free. I, I actually will be needing that exact model for a project some point after my move. And it's going to be very, very useful that I, I actually was going to buy that exact model of card for something. And you've saved me having to do that. So that's awesome. Actually, threw in a SCSI card and an I.O. card as well. The I.O. card will go in my 286 as I dislike the implementation I have in there at the moment. And I have other plans for this Pentium machine. The SCSI, I don't know about. I prefer my old Adeptec card and I really have nothing to use it with. Unless my one old SCSI hard drive turns up and still works. But I don't know where it is and it was pretty shit anyway. Could be maybe using an adapter with one of my Pentium 3's old drives I guess. As one of those still works. The, the Western Digitals that were in there. Uh, they weren't in when we looked at it because they weren't working right. Only one was left. I believe this S3 card is a 1 megabyte card though, and I won't be running anything which requires more than that, so that's adequate for me. Can always change it later. This is the multi IO card, and uh, it was the one that came my 386, not the one that was installed in there, though we did have it on loan until I find this one. Both serial ports use a header, so I'll be using the ones in the case. And there's for the one on the back of the card. Well, I could remove it, but I might actually wire that up to the CPU speed control jumpers and do some clever shit with relays so I don't have to have a control box plugged in. But if I do, I can adjust the clock from outside. Functionally, these cards are all the same. This card runs a floppy drive and the CD-ROM drive, of course. And it's not really very interesting to look at because we do know what these do by now. They're really not very smart. It does rate an interesting point though, because the motherboard, an Abbott PS5, is it Abbott or Abbott? Uh, I'll pronounce it Abbott. Sometimes. It seems to vary, actually. But this uh, Abbott PS5 does not have any I.O. outside of its keyboard port, anyway. 
It feels like an old 486 board or something. It seems to have been produced around 1994, which is about the same time as the VLB board in Hooker, my 486SX, which I'm sure you know by now. A board which also has now on board IO, along with the one in the 386 from around the same time. Hence, this IO card being required. I've never seen a Pentium board like this, though, so it's kind of weird. At the time, the general setup would have probably been an ISA card for floppy and general I.O. and a SCSI card to run the hard drive. This board would have been expensive and therefore would have been used in a server or workstation where the faster drives were required. So, Abit might have been onto a good idea here. I think even Intel made a version of their board that had SCSI on board. It sure beats having that flaky RZ1000 controller that's hooked up to the floppy interrupt controlling your hard drive and corrupting your hard drive. Also, keeping the CD-ROM and hard drive on a separate bus is useful for other reasons which we might briefly see later on. My hard drive's currently running from the Pentium D's old IDE card. This is a generic ITE branded controller for the PCI bus with some shitty repairs I did and crappy LED jumpers I added. It isn't running great, but it's it's enough for now. Strangely, if the CD-ROM's connected to it, it exhibits a bit swap as if the endianness is wrong or something. I hate that word. Microsoft Office does not recognise the word endian anyway, or, or I'm spelling it wrong. CD-ROM is 4-speed Mitsumi for the IDE interface, and it does nothing remarkable. I suppose it's impressive it even works at all, to be honest, given how old it is now. My hard drive is an overkill 6GB Seagate. This will probably be its last job and it's one of my last mechanical drives. It still sounds okay though, so it will probably stay for a while if I don't scuzzy this system. This is my Pro Audio Spectrum Plus. I fucking love this card. It's sort of like a sound blaster, but it's better. It kicks major ass and the FM sounds great. This is an ISA 3Com card which will be replaced with a PCI one at a later date. No much point in waiting for that as it changes nothing outside the speed I can transfer things. I quite like having it here though because it's not sharing a bus with the hard drive. The SIS chipset has a real PCI and ISA bus which are completely separate. Not uncommon at the time but who knows, someday I might look at a system which uses a bridge and this information will then be relevant. That's pretty much it. The motherboard is nice though and it supports 60MHz and 66MHz processors. Which is all you could do with the original Pentium. It, it never went any faster. I believe there might have been overdrive chips for it, but I don't have one, don't really want one, and don't know how well they worked if they ever did exist. On the memory side of things, this thing actually has 64 megabytes of fast page dynamic RAM on those two modules there. So they're 32 meg modules, which is quite unusual, and that is really overkill. So that's really impressive. And... Uh, yeah, I've got to say, that is something I have never really seen before. I believe it's non-ECC, I can't really check, but I shall find out for you. Yeah, unless I've miscounted in my tiredness, there are nine chips on there, which would imply that this was ECC memory. And that might explain the marginal slowdown. I, I wonder if we replace that with non-ECC, whether we might see a slight boost. I mean... It, that would be in step with that. ECC does run just a fraction slower, but not really noticeably. I'm not bothered, so I'm not likely to test it unless we do another video on this machine, because I don't have the time right now. But that's just an interesting thing to think about. And whilst we're on about the memory, I forgot to mention this thing does have 512 kilobytes of L2 cache in it, or is it kibabytes? I think it's supposed to say. I'll call it kilobytes, I always have but I don't believe it's technically correct. And that's more than quite a lot of uh, Socket 7 boards, which actually had the cache built in. So, yeah, and it should be enough for uh, 64 megs in here, I would have thought. I'm not sure. I did use know the math on it. And it tells a story because somebody, it looks like, started with only 256k, which I'm not sure which ones those would have been. I would go with the Alliance ones been first, and these uh, TM Tech ones been the later ones that they bought. These were an upgrade that somebody did at some point in the motherboard's past, which is always pretty cool to see. You know, it's, that's history right there. Tagram's a UMC.
they're all 15 nanoseconds so yeah as I've always said you don't really need 12 nanosecond on a 486 when you're going over 33 megahertz pointless so how does this thing run well it makes nice noises Oh, you can't beat a real hard drive. The compact flash can never come close. I'm going to have to come up with something for that. Probably involving some dead hard drives. Could be an interesting experiment. The IDE card can take its time detecting drives when it's cooled. I think my salvage capacitors aren't really much better than the ones I replaced, but they're going to last long enough for me to get another card somewhere down the line. I think. The drive is still corrupted from the old board anyway, so it doesn't really matter if this ruins the partition, as it's going to get completely wiped when a new card's installed anyway. I can't load EMM386 as this stops the IDE card working, but I haven't run into any software I'm running which actually wants that loaded yet, so that might not be an immediate problem. In fact, only if that becomes a problem will I move to SCSI. The CD-ROM will always use the IDE interface on the I.O. board though, no real point in using anything else here, as all I need is a 4-speed drive, and the ISA bus is fast enough to support one without a bottleneck. In fact, the ISA bus is probably good enough to run an IDE hard drive or a compact flash. You get about 8 megabytes per second through it, we're not really going to be pulling much more than that on here. I still have the Pro Audio Spectrum's ability to be controlled by software from the command line. That's very nice indeed. Nothing beats a volume knob for the volume, though. And I suppose I could make a batch file, a little bit like this one. That's more efficient, but it still can't be adjusted in the middle of running a program, so there's a bit of a trade-off there, I guess. Depends on what you prefer. Benchmark-wise, it is not bad at all, on par with the old machine. Trading places by narrow margins, such as been a bit slower in Quake. Not really noticeable, and returns the same result, or close enough, every time. Unlike the last board, which was... Pretty random for everything. I'm not going to bother reading them all out to you, so I'm showing you the scores and listing out the old and new ones for each system. So, in 3D Bench, it looks like this. In PCP Bench, it looks like this. In Doom, it looks a bit like that. And in Quake, it looks pretty much as you'd expect. Runs fine. Strangely, in Duke 3D, it does that same hiccup thing the other one did, even in Lame Duke. It's not crunching the hard drive when this happens most of the time, so that's probably not the issue, and I can only assume it's some weirdness specific to these Pentium chips and the build engine. But I mean, by then maybe Socket 5 chips were being used for most of the final game's optimization. I really don't know. Who knows how optimized it actually was. It supposedly was optimised for Pentium machines, and I'm fairly confident 3D Realms tested everything on a 486DX266 though, hence the message in ZooMap, uh, the slowdown room I call it. Yeah, uh, that seems to be its purpose anyway, to test the frame rate out on the, the minimal system. It's certainly playable though, I really wouldn't play it on this kind of machine, and it does feel more stable than the old board. I uh, haven't had a single divide by zero or anything yet anyway, so yeah, I mean, it, it seems to be running well. Of course, a lot of games work fine. Here's one I want to try. It says it's for the Pentium. Flight Unlimited. Um, oh, there's the divide overflow I love so much. But I caused that one with the mouse driver, and this board's fairly consistent, even when it doesn't work with something, which makes it much easier to figure out. I can actually reproduce this problem on demand so it is loading a mouse driver into high memory will crash flight unlimited's installer on this machine i somehow doubt the super high 1024 by 768 mode is going to run very well here so let's try good old vga that's that it's flyable but that's about it it's not great we could turn the detail down if we wanted it to go faster i love this game or simulator we can actually ramp the detail up to decent levels, and I've got it pretty much maxed at the moment, or, or close enough. So it actually does run quite well. Apparently it's playable on a 486DX33 as a minimum, 
So I might have to test that. Hang on, 4860X. You know, I sure hope those points are flirting properly. I understand that term is incorrect. Actually, I do see some pretty strange artifacts happening, like the sky showing through the floor, which I've not seen on any other computer I own. At least, not that much. So perhaps we are occasionally hitting small inaccuracies in calculations here. It could be, or it could just be a compatibility thing with the video card. Who knows? Realms of the Haunting, a surprisingly fun little game. Actually, a very interesting idea. A, a horror point-and-click adventure game which handles like an FPS. It even has some FPS elements. Along with an interesting gun-aiming mechanic, a bit like Goldeneye, but better. Perhaps we should look at this game someday. Not much to say today, though, beyond it runs fine. Perhaps a bit better than on the other Pentium, as the only slowdown here is happening when the system crunches the drive, which it does more than it used to. You can actually see here how the CD-ROM and hard drive can be accessed at the same time, partly because they're not sharing a bus, though a large chunk of it's probably down to the capabilities of the modern IDE card. Actually, that CD drive sure sounds enthusiastic about its work. Mitsubi is probably one of the most enthusiastic sounding drives I've ever had. Reminds me of the PS1. Well, I hate the PS1. No, it doesn't. Uh, there is one strange thing, though. If I switch the game into a certain video mode, the game has a fucking seizure. Which is quite fun. I really do like these Pentium systems. They, they do some pretty strange things. Of course, it runs pretty much anything a 486 can run, and it performs just a bit slower than my Pentium Overdrive. System built to replace my original Pentium, but I really did want a real Pentium as well. So these two will just to be, uh, so these two will just have to be on some kind of time-sharing thing, I guess, where I use one for today and one for tomorrow and just alternate every once in a while. They do both handle very differently, however. Feels different to actually use each machine. Windows 3.1 for work groups is as good as ever. It works fine. Nice software for the Pro Audio Spectrum, as we know. And here's some crappy music. play the system's theme music but I probably shouldn't. Yeah all, all my machines have theme music. If you want to hear the music I chose for this one check the annotation. Actually fuck it let's just play it so you can hear how well the Pro Audio Spectrum can reproduce that. Yeah it's playing from a WAV file. Crap 90s songs. Oh dearie me. I listen to terrible music sometimes. And that's about it really, there's not too much to say, and I'm pressed for time. Still, this gives you an idea of what became my Pentium, it, it does a lot of the same stuff the old one did but doesn't spaz out about it. I suppose if I change my hardware to any significant degree, you might see this thing again someday if I can ever find space to keep doing this at my new house. Right now, it looks like I'll have to be a single computer guy, at least for some time, and that's really not good. I can't tell you when I'll be back, because there's going to be a lot of work to do, fixing floors, screwing with heating systems, and getting the wall insulation ripped out so I can actually breathe. Uh, goodbye disturbance money. As for the computer, it does not yet have a name, and all of my machines have a name. Usually a female name, except Hooker and Dave. Uh, you'll never really see Dave. Anyway, feel free to fire me suggestions if you think you know one that'll suit it. But if you don't want to, that's fine. And don't be surprised if I don't actually use any of uh, anybody's suggestions if I think of one that I like better. I would crank the system to 66 MHz, but that also increases the voltage just a hair, and I, I don't really want to risk cooking this chip if something goes wrong, as I doubt I'll be able to get hold of another FDIV Pentium by this stage. Here's the FDIV bug in action. As you can see, the result of this sum should read 
1338, I think the decimal point, so 0.13338, and so on. It doesn't, proving this thing is broken. There's something quite intriguing about knowing the system could break down at any moment. These early Pentiums are a bit crazy sometimes, that's half the fun now. Would have been annoying though if you had to rely on one. I wonder if Intel had actually honoured their policy to replace the CPU, and perhaps I should call them to find out. Maybe another time. It is very strange though, because when you really think about it, a computer that can't do mathematics properly is really a failure by its own definition, but I don't mind. I actually quite like this thing. Let's just say it's quirky. Well, that's that. Expect a bunch of shit videos documenting my move. I think I've already uploaded one. Uh, I mean, I've filmed it, I've pressed upload on it, uh, where I'm messing about with a wash basin, you know. Uh, so yeah, videos documenting my move. I do also want to make videos of me doing work on my new house. I find stuff like that actually quite interesting. Uh, not sure anybody else does. And if you don't, then, well, <laughs> ignore them will return to fairly normal programming at some point, like eventually. Just be aware that there will be a patch where the videos are not the same as usual. Such videos probably will involve me cussing the world out and hitting things with hammers, because I do like hammers. If you do watch them, you might even learn something, as computers aren't my only skill. One advantage of being reasonably poor is that you learn how to make things work without having to rely on other people very much, if at all. I can't do shit about the internet though, that will be even slower, and it's caused me problems in here, you know, for quite a while now. It's going to take about three hours to upload that video of me dicking around with the fucking wash basin, so... Yeah, you know, that's a relatively short video with the rendering quality cranked down, so... Even slower internet is going to be a nightmare, and there's no plans for it to be updated to fiber anytime soon. I have... Uh, I have over seven thousand... seven... I can't even say it. I, I keep twisting my words a little. I've got to get this checked out. It's, uh, it's probably just stress. I had over 700 subscribers now. That's just worrying. In in fact, it seems like I only just announced 600 not long ago. And that's crazy. It makes me wonder if I can actually reach a thousand. You know, it seems almost within in reach now. I never ever thought I would even get the other side of 500. I don't think I'd get the other side of 100. It's absolutely fucking incredible. I... <laughs> so there is something good. In amongst all the crap that's happening at the moment. I do wonder, can I get to a thousand without resorting to cheap clickbait? Which is something I'll never do. Except on April the 1st. Like, I fuck about on April the 1st when I, you know, if I have time. What do I do if I actually get there? I probably never will, so I'm going to have a long time to think about it. But, what the hell? Man, that didn't taste good. I don't know where that came from. What's wrong with having facial hair? You know, you're going to save, save a meal for later. Mmm, mmm, tastes like sandwiches. But, uh, you know, that's 
that's awesome i gotta say you know i don't do this for the views and shit but it is a good feeling so thank you very much to everybody who's pressed that button all 710 or however many it is now of you that, that's i guess my channel's kind of exploded a bit i mean i this is pretty huge for a little niche channel like mine you know i'm never going to be a huge channel i don't want to be i, I like being a small channel so yeah uh, that <laughs> it's awesome thank you is all i can say I'm, I'm not good at saying thank you i'm absolutely shit at it it's one of the reasons i hate christmas you know i think you might know i don't like christmas and i don't like birthdays and that's one of the reasons why because people will get you presents and shit and this is a bit like that people press that button i don't know how to say thank you but i do mean it believe me i, I really do mean it do understand that am i treason and you know this house had one hell of a run you haven't seen the last of it, but this will be the last computer video I can film here. I do not have time to make any more. In fact, by the time this is done and uploaded, I might not even be living here. I bet the guys who built this place around 1937 didn't think someday it was going to be the origin of some 200 videos or so for the internet. I mean, the internet wasn't even really much of a concept back then. I mean, it... Unless you count like teletype machines, I guess in an abstract sense they were an early version of machines communicating over telephone cables. I've, I've come a really long way since I, I started out in 2007 in the children's home and since I left the children's home, and you can even see that in my videos here, not just in the real world. Uh, the first video uploaded from here was the Lame Duke video, a large chunk of which does seem to have been recorded in the home. Uh, I'm, I do wonder what would have been, you know, how different things would have been if I'd had internet access when I started out and if I hadn't been in the children's home where you couldn't go five minutes without somebody kicking off, breaking into your room, pissing on the carpet and throwing shit at you. And when I say throwing shit at you, I mean shit, as in feces. Quite an unpleasant existence. Would not recommend it if you are in care or have been in care. Then, uh, yeah, I know what that's like. It isn't fucking fun. So, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's success, you have my sympathies on that because it is a load of fucking bullshit and the system doesn't work you got to get le learning how to manipulate the rules to your own ends if you want anything out of it and don't be a nice guy don't be a bully but don't be a nice guy make sure people know you're not going to stand for any shit uh, it's the only way you can survive in that environment but I don't miss that place but I am going to miss this house you know I know it's a real shit all, but it's, it's my home. I'm really going to miss it. This this house felt like home the day I walked into it, and it always will, you know, as long as I'm here, you know, until the very last minute. And even for a long time after I've gone, I think this is always going to feel like my home. This is my first house that was under my own name and not somebody else's. So, you know, I'm, this is my neighbourhood. This is where I grew up in this area. You know, this is where I'm from. It's, it's pretty shit that I've been removed from it. It's, it's not through my doing. It's, it's absolute bullshit. And I, I don't really know what to say, but I, I'm really going to miss this place. It's been a good house. And it's been cheap to rent. And I know it's a, I know it's a shithole. I know the neighbourhood's not meant to be great. It's just a bloody council estate. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, but... It's, it's my home. I don't I don't really want to leave. But unfortunately I don't really get any say in the matter. So I, I guess this is it for computer videos from here. I hope you've enjoyed all the videos that were made in this house. Because we sure gave it a good go in here, didn't we? And uh, yeah, I'm high treason. All i got left to say for the time being is fuck you old city council, fuck you Siemens, and that's that. I'll uh, leave you with uh, something of videos I've made in here, maybe before, because I feel like it, I don't know. I'm high treason, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Well, good day. Hello everyone. I'm a treason. <laughs>
just just look at this stuff. I can stop. You know, I just wanted to show you, this is one of two cameras used actually right on my very first YouTube video and a lot of the very first things I ever filmed were all shot with either this or a very similar one that used regular serial instead of USB so that just shows you how far we've come I mean, this thing's busted up, it does still run a bit, piezo speaker's broken off but yeah that is uh, one hell of a thing. <laughs> As you can see, it's a, a quartz display. Uh, you know, liquid crystal. It's like what you get on a calculator. All the segments are already, you know, they're pre-done. So it can only display what it was meant to display. It does take regular batteries. It does have standard USB. So I mean, they were kind of uh, halfway there, I suppose. And it was five pounds. For five pounds, it did the job. I do not begrudge it. It was a start. And that humble little camera there is part of what started all of this. So yeah, just think. It's uh, it was used in that orientation. By the way, it was not the best thing in the world. It's uh, 2002 technology. This one, I think, you may be able to see. It may have a date printed on it. Let's have a look. The chip doesn't contain any text, but the board has silk screen 2102. So is that week 21, 2002? A very long time ago. So, yeah, damn. That's, uh... Feels weird holding that in my hands again. I gotta say.